Dude, we're here at the dealership. I'm stoked. It's kind of a surprise inside waiting for me. Let's go check this badass thing out. Twenty twenty two Street Glide ST Harley Senate giving it to me for thirty days to test ride and review. It is even better looking in person, man. That thing is hot. So yes, Hardy Davidson loaned me this 2022 Streetlight ST for a thorough test ride and review, which is exactly what I'm going to do in this video. But in no way was I paid for this review whatsoever and Harley has never told me what I can and can't say or I simply would not do these reviews. So as you become accustomed to on this channel, you'll always get an honest, real world biker review. Oh, and in case you're new to the channel, I'm a full-time police motorcycle officer and instructor Additionally, I have multiple bikes and put on many miles off-duty on both street and off-road adventure rides. Now, I'm going to review the Streetlight ST from the perspective of an average everyday biker out there and tell you what you actually need to know about this bike and if it's right for you. So let's do this, huh? Gonna be riding the heck out of this thing, so I gotta do something to it real quick. Of course, I gotta put a biker gripper cell phone motorcycle mount on it. Could've went with chrome, decided to go with black, since it's black. Of course, the strongest, sexiest, sleekest cell phone motorcycle mount on the market, tried and tested right here by the Law Abiding Biker crew. It is available in the Law Abiding Biker store, and I'll link to it in the description below. Let me get this thing on here. And of course, I'm gonna be riding this thing as much as possible. We gotta have a Zero 3D drink holder on it. All I've got is a chrome, but I'm gonna throw it on. We also have black. Of course, in the Law Abiding Biker store, link description below. Get this bad boy mounted. Now we're ready for business. Gotta be able to carry my coffee. Ready? I'm get Here we go, zero to 60. There we are, 60 right there. She gets up and moves. Whoa, she'll break it loose. Oh yeah, there's 60, she'll break it loose. So we figured out who had this bike before me here. The list paired phones and devices. Travis Wyman's iPhone. So this must have been uh, the bike he was demoing. If you don't know who he is, check out King of the Baggers series. Pretty badass. They're saying this bike has a better lean angle. It actually sits the same as my uh, 2018 Police Electroglide. And we're into the floorboards there. I don't know how well you could hear that. Seems like I can lean a little bit more than my 18 Electroglide, but we'll see. So, you can still get in the floorboards real easy, but it does seem like it, uh, it does seem like it's a little bit more delayed before I get into them, if that makes sense. So, and don't worry, we will be hitting some uh, higher speed roads with twisties where I can test that lean angle a little bit more, but that's a city environment anyways. And I definitely said I'd want to put some different mufflers on this and probably headers without cats maybe because I don't know where, how well you can hear it but it's it's pretty quiet and obviously Hardy has to do that for federal regulations and all that so as you would expect with a street glide special the ST is no different uh, very solid on the freeway uh, 
feels the front end feels very tight. Yeah, I mean you can run it, you know, no hands and just manipulate your weight a little bit. It's tracking really good. I would expect nothing less from a 2022 Harley Davidson at this point. And so following up on lean angle, you know, something like my street glide special, it's sitting about an inch lower and definitely I'm into the floorboards all the time when I'm riding more aggressively, carving the canyon. Um, this sits higher again, like my 2018 police electric glide that I ride. And so theoretically, it should take longer before you're, you should be able to lean more before you get into those floorboards. But we've got some great corners coming up here. And we got into them a little bit there, but not bad. Just for the uh, sort of the apex of that corner, we scraped a bit, but I'd be scraping all the way through there on my special, so. Spike coming with the uh, Milwaukee 8 117 oil and air cooled four valves per cylinder. They say putting out 106 horsepower, 126 foot pounds of torque. The bike is lighter than like a Street Glide Special, which comes in at about 827 pounds. This one coming in at about 814. And if my math's right, we're looking at like 13 pounds lighter for the ST here. So they shave some there. It's a solo seat, no passenger foot pegs. Um, they shave some weight in some different places. And in comparison, so 106 horsepower for this, a street glide special coming in somewhere around 100. Give or take, those are just estimates. Okay, so as you'd expect from an engine like the M117 here, the V-Twin, I'm running in third gear right now, and we're right up in between 3,500 and 4,000, which is where that power band is. So you've got plenty of juice when you're up in those RPM levels. Once you get below that, we're in third gear. We'll drop it down to about 2,500, and we'll roll it. Then it gets up in that power band again. So it's what we would expect. And so of course the Boombox GTS system, nothing's changed with controls. 
you know, you got your run, kill switch over here, your start, your hazard, your signal, and then you've got return for your boombox functions. This side, your horn, your high beams. You do have horn, traction control there, low and high beams, I should say, your signal, and then you can activate Siri. Cruise controls over here. Then you've got your tooth toggles down here for operating your boombox. So pretty standard as far as the controls go. And we'll talk about traction control a little bit later. Do some testing. Of course, six-speed transmission. You got your heavy breather there. Of course, coming with a six-speed transmission. And yes, Harley went back to the cable clutch. That's a whole nother conversation. But we'll be doing some drills. I'll do some lower speed drills with uh, their version or their newer version of the cable clutch. I guess it's pretty much the same as it used to be. And then our disc brakes. You got uh, two discs front, one disc rear. So we're down in third at about that 3,500. She can blow by the cars. Let's see what Lurch has to say here about this. So this bike coming with a 19-inch uh, front tire, 18-inch rear tire, and a six-gallon fuel tank. And they say this uh, bike is in premium conditions, is getting 41 miles a gallon. In comparison, the Street Glide Special is 43 miles per gallon, so not a huge difference there. Alright, so we're going to do a little suspension test on this bike. No better way to do it than on a uh, gravel road with a bunch of rocks and stuff here. And we'll kind of get up to speed here. Now this bike coming with 49 millimeter dual bending valve front forks and we've got premium hand adjustable standard height rear shocks and I'm hitting some pretty good dips here in potholes. Now this bike sits higher an inch higher uh, than the regular like or street glide specials or road glide specials all that kind of stuff for that extra lean angle but as you can see I'm hitting some pretty good bumps here and it's handling it pretty good I mean yes this bike is not an off-road bike but it uh, is handling it way better than my 14 street glide special which would be jarring my back for sure on this Got some more rocks here. Oh, and some big puddles coming up. Go around those. Pretty impressed for stock shocks. Like I said on my 14 Street Glide Special, we would definitely be getting my back jarred and all that kind of stuff. That's why we're going to put on my 14 Street Glide Special, we're going to be putting Olin suspension soon. Of course, we're going to film it, do a complete DIY video for you guys. And we'll be selling Olin's in the Law Abiding Biker store. So I'll get up here. We're doing about 30 through this road here. Second gear. Not bad for a street bike. Big dip. Oh! And it's not bottoming out, which is cool. There's plenty of suspension travel to handle this road. So you know on the street it's going to handle it well. 
All right, guys, so we're just going to talk about traction control a little bit. Now, every time that you start the bike, it's going to be in regular traction control mode. Uh, you can turn it off. Even if you turn it off, if you turn the bike off and restart, it's going to be in regular traction control mode. The way you take traction control off, if you like, is there's a button over here, TC. You push and hold it. And these are flashing normally, but now you see it's solid. I pushed and hold it for a couple seconds. Now it's solid, which means traction control is completely off on this bike. All right, so first we'll do it with trash control completely off. And of course, it's gonna act like a regular bike that we're used to. We're gonna go ahead and turn trash control. I pushed it once over here. Now we're in regular trash control mode. So let's see how that operates. Started spinning, full throttle, full throttle there. And as soon as it gets traction, it starts letting up and uh, gets you going, but it really tames it down. So let's go try rain mode. So now we're gonna turn it on rain mode, which you push it once and it turns on the little cloud with rain. Now this bike has a lot of horsepower and it's got a lot of torque. So if you're a new rider, you could even use this mode to tame this bike down, uh, to learn to ride it first, even on regular roads with no rain, that's what's nice. And it would really calm the bike down and get a feel of it. And then you could go into regular trash control or trash control off. So here's rain mode. And I'm floored. Throttle's floored and we're barely going. It's catching up now. So, rain mode definitely tames it down even a lot more than regular trash control so pretty cool modes to have And just real quick, we'll get right back into your video. As you can imagine, a lot of man hours and expenses go into keeping this channel going strong. There is a way you can support us by becoming a patron member. I will link to it in the description below. There are benefits for becoming a member, such as t-shirts and stickers. You get access to the private Facebook group, which is a troll free zone, nothing but bikers helping bikers. Access to live video broadcasts and chat podcasts early, premium videos up on requests and access to those ride meetup and events. We appreciate you considering becoming a member. Let's get back into your video. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is just test the uh, low speed capabilities of this bike and how well it's balanced and then the lean angle. We're on the police uh, motors course. I don't have it all set up. I do have a pattern we'll do in a minute, but I'm just gonna do some bar lock turns right now and really just get a feel for the bike and what it's all about. So let's uh, do that. All right, so we're gonna go into a full bar lock right hand turn here. Very similar to my police Electroglide as far as balance and how it feels. We're in the floorboard there a little bit, so. But good balance and good lean angle, I like that. All right, we'll go into a uh, left-hand bar. And you see on this bike, I have to choke up a lot on the, uh, seat it's pretty normal full bar lock that's why i like my police bike because the tractor seat it sits me up over it i don't have to choke up as much but all right so very familiar and uh clutch has a decent amount of gray area or friction zone now we're going to come in here and just see how the bike transition full bar lock here full bar lock back the other way yeah very familiar very very well balanced and um yeah clutch gray area is good and uh you got plenty of laying angle but as you can see you'll still get in the floorboards if you're pushing it all right we're gonna come in this time and we'll do a left hand turn we'll go into the right here and into the floorboards a little bit there not bad all right we're gonna go in right hand but we're gonna dig for the left here We go all 
All right. So all in all, um, it's very much what I expected um, as far as handling. It does handle a lot like my Police Electroglide. Uh, it does sit an inch higher than like my 14 Street Glide Special. So that's nice. It gives you more uh, clearance. Obviously, when I do these patterns on my Street Glide 14, it's dragging the floorboards a lot more. But as you saw, you can still, obviously, you're going to get in the floorboards if you're pushing hard. And if you'll come around here, um, and take a look with me. I want to show you rider position, rider triangle. Uh, very familiar street glide, and I will say when I am just sitting on this bike, you can see I'm 5'8, I am flat footed, uh, so no problem. And I, you could even be shorter. You can see I got a good bend in my knees, so shorter riders could even handle this bike. And when I'm riding normal out on the road and just carving corners, uh, you know, in the canyon and stuff like that, um, I'm sitting back, no problem, all the way in the saddle. It's got a nice little curve up which is nice uh, so when you get on that throttle it pushes you back it keeps you in the saddle it's a pretty comfortable seat for stock uh, no complaints there it is stock obviously uh, you'd want to change it out if you're long touring but my arms as you can see have a little bend in them now when i'm doing low speed maneuvers of course that changes everything because i need the full bar lock and my arms just aren't long enough so that's why you'll see me choke up so far on the bike uh, before I go into patterns. Uh, so low speed maneuvers, that's pretty typical for a guy my size. My police bike has a tractor seat, so it sits me up and over more, but I still have to choke up a bit. So that's normal. But other than that, just for cruising, great riding uh, position as we'd expect with a street glide. And all in all, have fun out of here. Now, I'm just gonna say this, and this is personal opinion, I've said it before. I've, I'm a motorcycle police officer and instructor. I can ride this course and I've ridden it for years with cable clutches, with hydraulic clutches, um, both, and I can ride it the same. I do prefer, I wish Harley would go back to all hydraulic clutches. They got away from it in 20 or 21, I can't remember. They went back to the cable and this does have a cable clutch. The reason I say that, I've got a lot of reasons. I've had a lot of time with both, so understand that. The reason I like hydraulic is they're consistent and they never change. That means I can jump on any of our police bikes or any street glides or anything or any other bike of the same model. That clutch pull is going to be very familiar and consistent and they don't need to be adjusted for the life of the clutch. They're maintenance free basically and you get less hand fatigue. Um, I'm already getting hand fatigue a little bit just from this cable. Um, that's normal. They're harder to pull. They just are and so for those reasons um, you know, I, I prefer and wish they would go to hydraulic but that's just me and my experience. Uh, Nice thing about the the hydraulic is also you can get like an AIM light force clutch slave cylinder and you can make the pull even lighter. Install that. We did a video on the channel. Um, I'll link to it in the description below on the install on that. And also we sell it right in the Law Abiding Biker store. Links in the description below. But all in all, I love the bike. And again, that's just my experience. Hydraulic is the way to go for me. All right, so this bike coming with cornering enhanced ABS, which means going around a corner, getting a bind. Uh, the bike's going to have ABS in a corner. Also coming with a linked braking system, which means if you all of a sudden get in a bind, you grab front only or rear only, it's going to apply pressure to the front or rear and try to equalize those out. That's not the way you should brake. You should use the 70-30 rule, front and rear proper braking, but the bike's going to try to do that for you if you get in a bind. Uh, track control, of course, we've already talked about track control, how that works, and as if you didn't notice already, I've been talking to you right here, I have no foot on the rear brake, and I have no hand on the front brake, and yet the bike is holding on this very steep hill, that is your uh, hill hold assist. Cool thing to have, uh, so just know that uh, the Street Glide ST does come with those things, so uh, rock on. All right, we're gonna do a little emergency, emergency threshold braking here and all front and all rear. And uh, obviously the bikes these days, amazing how quick you can stop.
All right, so here with Lurch, and uh, he's been riding the Street Glide ST for a while now. And uh, first of all, how tall are you? And then what are your thoughts as a tall rider on this bike? What would you do to it? I am six foot four, and the first thing I would have to do is change out the air intake, that uh, high performance intake that sticks out there just in the way. My shin is hitting it. And I have a 36 inch inseam, so uh, a little bit longer legs. And it actually, uh, because that's in the way, makes it a little tough, difficult for me to get to the brake. So first thing I'd have to do is change that out. And then probably followed by some bars, but that's pretty common for me on all kinds of bikes. I have to put some more comfortable bars on them. Would you also put uh, forward controls, maybe move the floorboards forward? Yeah, I would move the floorboards forward, put an extended brake lever on and get that stuff out a little bit farther. That'd be a little more comfortable for me. Again, the biggest thing would be changing out that intake to something that's a little more streamlined, doesn't uh, interfere with my leg. You have fun riding the bike. Oh, hell yeah. It's fun. It's Zippy. got a lot of zip. It's fast. Yep. There you go from uh, Tall Rider, guys. So there's no doubt this bike was a blast to ride and it performed very well. Really enjoyed riding it through the twisties, but there's some things we should talk about. And as usual on this channel, you're gonna get an honest review. So I'm gonna give you some pros and cons and some final thoughts, things you wanna think about on whether you should get this or a regular special model. So let's talk pricing real quick. Uh, the Street Glide ST with rider enhancements coming in at $31,024. The Street Glide Special with rider enhancements coming in at $28,474. That means the ST is $2,500 more expensive than the Special model. Some of the pros of this bike are, I really like the audio system. It was plenty loud at freeway speeds with a full face helmet. I like that this ST model sets an inch higher than the special models, giving you more lean angle. The seat, it was pretty comfortable for a stock seat, but if I was gonna ride long distance, I definitely would change the seat out. And I really like the looks of that front fender. And of course, the Milwaukee 8117 performed as expected. So what I'm about to tell you isn't just unique to the ST, but also uh, to the special models. They all come with the Boombox infotainment system. However, Harley out of the factory is not installing a WIM, and that's a wireless headset interface module. And basically what that allows you to do is pair a wireless Bluetooth headset, one of Harley's headsets, Senna makes them, to the Boombox, allowing you to interface with the Boombox. And of course that also activates Apple CarPlay. If you want to use a wired headset, a Harley branded, you can, and it would also activate Apple CarPlay. So on this bike, I didn't have that because it doesn't have a whim. And I just think at this point that Harley should really consider putting the whim on the bikes out of the factory. So getting a little bit nitpicky, because that's what we do on the channel is review bikes. It's coming with an LED headlight and taillight, but it's coming with halogen turn signals. So I wish they would make that change. And also, this doesn't really bother me, but it will bother some people is that when you look at the rear of the bike, they did make squared off saddlebags instead of like the special models where the saddlebags are contoured to the pipes. That's not necessarily a con to me, but I have read some comments. It is a con to some people. And as Hardy has mentioned, this is the first time you get a CVO powertrain in a non CVO bike. And it's really a blank canvas for performance parts, which Harley is making. And you could easily put a stage four kit on this and make it a 131. Oh, and just real quick, before you leave the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and bell icon. Every time those are hit, another biker joins a revolution. We would love to have you be part of it. And I've got a few more thoughts, but make sure you tune in to Law Abiding Biker Podcast episode number 295, where we interviewed Paul James, Bjorn Schuster, and Eric Buckhouse of Harley Davidson on the ST models, and we get really in depth. You can listen to it on any major podcast platform. I'll link to it in the description below. So it really comes down to, do you get the ST model or the special model? Well, that's really gonna depend on your needs and wants. Understand that the ST is a performance bagger inspired by King of the Baggers. It is set up for a solo rider. However, of course, you could add passenger pegs and a seat, but the special models are $2,500 cheaper and they already come with those items. So it's really gonna depend on what you want. And so one of the questions is, why did Harley kind of tease a performance bagger? And many think that they should have just came out with an all out high performance bagger. 
Uh, I have an answer for you. And I'll take a direct quote from Brad Richards, Vice President of Styling and Design at Harley-Davidson. He answers it by saying, the ST models are a good step in warming up Harley-Davidson customers and dealers to the high performance bagger trend before going full on with a true performance race inspired machine. It's part of the beginning of a new narrative of Harley Davidson and changing the perspective of what the brand can produce. So if you make the decision to buy this thing, I guarantee you will be completely satisfied and it is a dream to ride. All right, your journey's not done on the channel. I'm popping a couple of videos on the screen here for you. Hopefully something useful or entertaining. Heck, maybe both. At any rate, when you're done watching videos on the channel, make sure you get out there and ride every chance you get, Bikeaholics. Peace. You say